Yet another way to figure out your bone density. Is that what we're talking about today? We certainly are. Welcome to Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Brad Weening. I'm Dr. Paul Zalzo. We're talking about REMS, or uh, Radio Frequency Echographic Multispectrometry. Say that 10 times fast. Yeah, not REM like the band from the 80s. Michael Stipe was the front man. Great band. A lot, of people, a lot of people think it stands for rapid eye movement, but the guy that coined that term actually reached out to the band at the time. Mm -hmm. And they're like, no, it wasn't that. It was just random. Just random, REM, yeah. three letters. Yeah. So now we have a bone density measuring tool called REM. And the reason we're making this video is because many people left comments on one of our last, uh, I think our DEXA video, yep. and said, hey, what about REM? Surprised you didn't mention REM. Why didn't you talk about <laughs> REM? Yeah. Well, here we are. Like a dog on a bone, really. Yeah. They were. Yeah. Um, so, so let's talk about first what it is. Hey, there's lots of different ways to measure bone density. DEXA historically has been the gold standard because of the test itself and decades of research validating it as a test. And check it out on our previous videos where we go through the different ways to measure it and yep. we omit REM. Yes. A mission on our part. So now we're going to talk about it. Right. So this is a technology that was invented by the Italians yes. in the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. And then it was... Um, uh, validated by their uh, governing body in 2006, which mm -hmm. is the CE, or essentially the um, European uh, equivalent mm -hmm. of the FDA or Health Canada. And then it slowly has made its way over here, but certainly the uptick here has been a lot slower. And it, to all our physicists in the audience, <laughs> we know you're upset by them saying RF inside right. the name, okay? Give us the name again. The, the radio frequency, yes. echographic. Yes. Multispectrometry. Yeah, because it's ultrasound, and now you're sitting there going, well, What are you talking about RF? Because when we think about radio frequency, we think about electromagnetic waves, okay? Those are the waves that are coming from the sun, that's like visible light, like your radio. Those are radio waves. Right. They're electromagnetic, they don't need a medium to go through. Ultrasound is a mechanical wave, completely different. It needs a medium to go through air, water, tissue, bone. Just like Radio Song by REM. There you go. <laughs> It's all tied together. But that's the problem. That's what drove me. And it's like, well, how can you have radio frequency ultrasound? But in the medical ultrasound world, they use the term radio frequency when they're describing some of the signal coming out of their ultrasound devices. So the way this thing works, can yep. I? You sure. And just so that you well, know, your kids are going to be happy because when Dr. Zalza retires, he's going to become a grade 12 physics teacher. Yes, I might. <laughs> grade you'd, be, you'd actually even be good. I'd love it. Yeah, you'd be right. I would love it. Um, so, basically, when we do ultrasound, we have a transducer that's like a speaker. It sends out an ultrasound wave. It bounces off a bunch of stuff in your body and comes back to another transducer that's like a s microphone, picks up the signal, yep. okay? It's piezoelectric, so it takes the sound waves or the mechanical waves and converts them to an electrical signal. When we use conventional medical ultrasound, that signal is then processed and it creates like an image when you look at the images of ultrasound, right. or the ones you and I use in recovery room when we're looking for pulses, yep. it, can, it uses Doppler ultrasound to look for flow and converts the signal to a sound. Yep. Now this REMS technology, what they're saying is, forget about all that processing, just give us this signal out of that transducer, right. we're gonna plug it into some AI. Complicated algorithm. We don't even care how it works, Nope. because <laughs> AI's gonna figure it out, yeah. and then that'll correlate to healthy bone. Right. So, it, and it doesn't send out like one frequency of ultrasound. It's a sort of a pulse of a bunch of different frequencies of ultrasound. And it comes back and then the other part of the name is spectral analysis, right? Yes. So it takes that signal, it breaks it down doing a spectral analysis, which means you look at different frequencies on the x-axis and on the y-axis, you look at the power. So you see which frequencies have high power, which frequencies have low power. And that correlates to how the bone bounces, absorbs, transmits, conducts the sound. We don't even care how it works because an AI okay. algorithm is going to figure it out and compare it to normal bone. Right. That's so, how this stuff So works. why are we even talking about this? If we have DEXA and it's like a good study, mm -hmm. why do we even care? Well, the advantage of this thing is because it's ultrasound, yep. there's no radiation. Right. Even so though it's what, called radio frequency. What I would say to that, though, is that the ultrasound, or sorry, the, the radiation from a DEXA is really low. Like okay. on the scale of 5 to 10 transatlantic flights. All right. Like once you get up in the atmosphere, the atmosphere protects you l from radiation. But the higher you go up elevation-wise, the less you're protected. So the equivalent is about 5 to 10 transatlantic flights or living on the Earth for like a day or two. Like All it's right. really quite low. But okay. I, I agree it's still okay, zero so is better one. than a little bit. 
Well, the other thing is they say it can be point of care test. It's a yes. more portable device. It's not a big DEXA machine. It's a right. point of care device, a smaller device that you can use at the bedside. That's another potential advantage. And the big problem with, with the, the DEX is that you do have to build a facility that has radi um, radiation protection devices around the unit itself. So it's much more complicated. It's a lot bigger. It's bulkier. Yep. And the other advantage is cost. It's cheaper to get one of these tests than a DEXA scan, supposedly. Yeah, supposedly. So the, 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 probably the cost per test is probably lower, but because a lot of insurance plans and other things don't cover it yet, right now it's, it depends on where you are. But yes, the mo I, think, I agree with you. I think the most important thing is that you can go to places that don't have access to DEXA, and mm -hmm. you can do it over and over. So say you're worried about the low-dose radiation, and say you were pregnant, or say you're receiving some type of treatment and you wanted more frequent tests. Like right now, DEXA, even if you're on a bisphosphonate, it's only every year or two to check the changes. You can do this every three months, every six months, whatever. You can do as much as you wanted. Mm, that's a good point. If you're looking for an REM, right now they're approved in Europe. Right. Uh, not so much in Canada uh, and the USA yet, but hopefully soon. Yes. All right, so then the next question I would pose to the audience is, do you think this might be more accurate than DEXA? Right. It's kind of a trick question because the answer is no. It's impossible right now for this to be more accurate than DEXA. Do right. you know why? Because it's calibrated against DEXA, the gold standard they use right. to compare whether you have normal bone or abnormal bone to figure out what the signal's coming out and calibrating it to make predictions. The data set they use is DEXA scanners. So the best it could be is equivalent. The best it could be is close to equivalent. It can never be totally right. equivalent because it has to have some inherent error in it. So yeah. it can approach the equivalence of DEXA because that's the gold standard it's comparing it to. Right. So no, it cannot be more accurate than DEXA. Yeah, the test itself, just so you know how it works, you go in just like a regular ultrasound. Usually the ultrasound is of your hip or both hips and your lower back. Um, uh, ultrasound technician typically gets you into a gown, exposes the air, and then ultrasound gel is used, and you're either on your side for the hip, and typically you're prone for the back part, but some people could theoretically be sitting up. Um, so that part is, it takes 10 to 15 minutes. There's no pain other than a little bit of direct pressure from the ultrasound itself, yeah. and then obviously no radiation. So it's a cool technology, I'll say that much. Yes. It's almost like looking down a femur and yelling, hey, and listening back for the echo you get, and then that echo you get is correlated to the quality of the bone. Paul and I did that study and it, it showed that it, it wasn't miserably. very useful. That's why people were walking by the OR and why are they always yelling into the fever? <laughs> yelling at the fever. Um, what it does though, it produces a T-score and a Z-score just like a DEX. And the difference between the T and the Z is the T-score is a standard deviation related to a 30-year-old healthy um, subject, whereas a Z-score is someone that's age-corrected. What, what's with the Z and not the Z? Did I don't, you, I don't, did know. You I don't I don't usually say Z. I don't know why. Really? Yeah, I usually don't, don't say Z. Zed's dead, baby. I say Zed, I never say Z. I know, I don't know why. It's in my name. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You get to pick. There you go. All right. So to all the people, thank you for leaving those comments yep. with REM and asking for us to talk about REM. Here it is, REMS. That's the technology. That's where it's at. Yeah, and I think some people were from whatever they read, we're thinking that, oh, this is superior, why aren't we using it well? I mean, it's not quite as good, it's a, you know, no radiation is the, is the big pro, I would say, and accessibility, but it's not, it certainly it's not superior, not being, not being deprived of this great test that exists that's better, but I think it's something to watch for, and as time passes, particularly as AI gets better and computer technology gets better, hey, maybe they can remove that, that operator-dependent variability and get it to be a better test that more of us can get. Right, so it's a radio frequency, but not electromagnetic like you would think as soon as you hear radio frequency. But leave a comment with your experience, whether it's with DEXA, with RAMS, whatever. And if you like this video, please like it. Subscribe to our channel. Try to push us over to one million. We're getting close. Remember, you are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time.